Hey guys, Stefan Fischer here from All of Road. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in today. In today's video, I would like to give you a short review of a GPS navigation app, which I use the longest. I think it's well over seven years now. The first GPS navigation app I ever purchased was the HEMA for wheel drive app. However, HEMA does not actually make the HEMA for wheel drive app, but they licensed memory maps and just rebranded it with a HEMA insignia. I don't really like where HEMA is going over the past two years. So I now deleted the HEMA for wheel drive app from all of my iPads and switched completely to memory maps. I already purchased maps through memory maps, uh, which I used to use on the HEMA for wheel drive app. For example, all the 25K topo maps for New South Wales, for Tasmania, for Queensland. So I transferred that all over now to memory maps. And also for full disclosure, memory maps gave me a few other maps for free, which I already purchased for other platforms. So let's now have a look into memory maps, why I like the application, what could be improved, but why overall it is probably the most stable GPS navigation app of all the applications available. And I'm using that now for over seven years. Memory Maps is available from the Apple App Store as well as from the Android Play Store. The desktop applications are available for Microsoft and as well in a feature reduced version for Mac. Unlike the HEMA for wheel drive app, which costs $99 and has the HEMA maps included, Memory Maps is free to download. After downloading Memory Maps, you should go to the Memory Maps website, create an account and sign in, and then you can purchase all your maps there. The big advantage is that the Memory Map license includes PC, Mac, iOS and Android for the same $99. There are also quite a few other maps available via the Memory Maps App Store. I would recommend, in addition to the HEMA maps, the 25k topo maps for the states you intend to travel in. I found them very good. Keep in mind, Memory Maps does not use subscriptions. So, for example, my New South Wales topo maps I bought many years ago and I'm still using the same maps. So, for long term use, it's way cheaper than, for example, HEMA with their subscription model. Just keep in mind, Memory Maps only has raster maps available, but that is not necessarily a bad thing. Once you have created your Memory Maps account, you open the application, then you click on the arrow which brings you to the settings, click on the little gear icon and then on Sign In where you enter your username and password which you used on the Memory Maps website to purchase the maps. Next, we want to download all the maps for offline use. Make sure you have sufficient space because depending on the maps you purchased, the downloads can be quite big. To do this, we click on the layers icon, which brings you to the map menu. Please listen closely as you need to do multiple steps to actually download the maps to your device. After selecting my online maps and maps everywhere, I can see the licenses for all purchased maps. A green tick means the license is already activated. The lock means the license is not yet activated. When you click on a map with a lock, the activation screen will come up where you need to click activate. After you then activate the map, you will actually see the map if you have an internet connection, but you have not downloaded the map. So as soon as you lose internet connection, you have no map. So the next step is very important to actually download the map. Go back to the map screen, select maps on device and maps everywhere. Then click on the little information icon and here you can bulk download the map. You can either download only parts of the map or like I do download the whole map. Depending on the map size, this can take some time and also take up some space so make sure you have enough available free space. Please ensure you have done that for every map with the maps everywhere selection enabled. Let me give you a quick overview of the on-screen controls. You have the map screen, here you have the search, the GPS lock, create a pin or route, create a waypoint or a track and the setting screen. You can also show 10 different telemetry options. I show you in a second how that works. Let's have a quick look through the settings menu and I'll show you how I configure memory maps. The units I leave at metric, 
the general settings, I enable automatic change map scale by zooming. This means that by zooming in and out on the map screen, you can change through all different maps you have available for that area. I also enable show scale bar, which shows you the scale bar on the map. Let's now have a look at the GPS settings. For the background recording, I choose car. However, if you do more hiking or cycling, you can choose that. This feature is important if you like your track logs being recorded when uh, you leave the app screen. However, it does consume more power, so be aware of that. I definitely enable the velocity vector setting. That is a great feature. It shows an extended line from your location arrow and shows you in which direction you're traveling. The end of the arrow will tell you where you're going to be in 10 minutes based on the speed you're currently driving. Finally, the map licenses shows you all your licenses and the expiration date. Let me quickly show you how you can change the telemetry on the map area, but also here in this screen. You have 10 different telemetries you can display on the map screen. Click on change data and then select whatever you would like to display in that particular location. It is a pretty neat feature. I just would wish that you can adjust the size of the display telemetry. Unfortunately, that is not possible. The same applies for this screen where you can make changes the same way and completely rearrange the layout. You can also save your layout and even share it with other people. Let's have a look how we can easily create a waypoint or a new route. Just click the flag icon and that will create a new waypoint in the middle of the map. You can then position the waypoint freely clicking the green arrow button. If you click the blue downwards button a menu will open which lets you interact with the waypoint. You can change the name, you could change the position, uh, longitude and latitude. You can add some notes, you can uh, change the icon and the color. You can also share the waypoint or route via the normal OS share function. If you want to plan a route from that waypoint, just click the blue downwards arrow and then create route. Now you can tap on the screen and each tap will create one waypoint. Unfortunately, the waypoints will not stick to the track, but will be exactly where you place them. A nice feature is that while you click, you see the distance of the route. And when you finish, just click the done button in the left hand corner. If you want to interact with the route again, just click on the route, then on the blue downward area and edit route. Here you have the same options as you had with the waypoint. So I'm not going to go into this all again. Let's have a look how we can log our tracks and manage our track logs. If you remember, I created a start and stop logging button on the map screen. And by clicking that, I start logging. And by clicking that again, I stop the logging. Even though the app is nine years old, how you manage your track logs is very basic. If you click this icon, you will end up in the waypoint screen. Then you have the routes and the tracks. Routes are tracks which you manually created. Tracks are tracks which you recorded while driving. And marks or waypoints are waypoints you create. If you click on any of the waypoints, routes or tracks, you are greeted by the same screen where you can edit the details. If you click on view, it will show you the route, track or waypoint on the map. In previous versions, you could not show or hide marks, tracks or waypoints on the map. This is now possible. However, the implementation is very cumbersome. You select the waypoint, route or track until the detail window pops up. But then instead of being able to change it there, you have to click on this gear icon here on top, which pretty much opens the same screen again with three more options. I really wonder who came up with that idea. However, this option now enables you to show or hide a track, waypoint or mark. It allows you to lock that particular waypoint or mark and uh, to prevent it from syncing. Let's have a look how the search works in memory maps. While it doesn't have the extensive POI database as the other HEMA maps, I still could find everything I was looking for. You just don't have additional information. Just click on the search icon, enter into the search window, whatever you are looking for, and the predictive search will give you all the results. One other good thing is that you don't need internet for the search to work because the database is downloaded. I had no issues finding more obscure places, for example, like the Cocklebiddy Caves. Let me quickly show you how you work best with the maps. Click on the map icon and this will bring you to the map screen. Click on maps on device and then maps at view and you will see all available maps for your current location on the map. The map currently selected is the one with the gray band. 
One way to change maps is to simply click on a different map here. That will change the map and bring you to it. You can also switch between maps by pinch zooming in or out. Continue to pinch in will bring you to the lower scale maps and if you pinch out to the larger scale maps. This way you can easily rotate through all maps available for that particular area. Generally this is a very useful feature. However sometimes it can be annoying because it can switch maps when you don't want to switch maps. So to disable that you just switch it off in the settings. Just disable automatically change map scale by zoom and you will stay on that particular map. As you can see here now as much as I try to zoom in or out I will stay confined to this particular map. To then change the map you will need to go to the map screen and manually select a different map. A good little feature which is not very well known is that you actually can lock the map screen. For example if you would like to put the iPad in your bag but keep the screen active. Just press and hold the location button until the screen locks. To unlock it again just click the unlock button. Uh, sometimes it needed a few tries for me to unlock it and I also had to hold uh, to unlock. You have a few more functions under the menu in the map menu. For example you can check for map updates which you should do from time to time. But you can also change the map sort order to sort by name, scale or distance and you can delete duplicate maps and see your map licenses. One of the great features for memory map is that you have a desktop application which is available for Mac and for PC. And if you purchase your maps via the memory maps website and not through the app store your license will be valid for Android, Apple and iOS. What I show above here is the Mac version which unfortunately has a few features less than the PC version. Nevertheless I have this installed on my M1 MacBook and that travels with me wherever I go. So if I want to do some planning on a bigger screen I can do that on the laptop. I can create routes and waypoints and then transfer them to my iPad. I also have a PC laptop which I sometimes take and I have memory maps installed there as well and all the maps downloaded. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of memory maps. The purchase of the HEMA for wheel drive maps via the memory maps website entitles you to a license for iOS, for Android, for the Mac desktop application as well as for the PC desktop application. Memory maps itself is free so in my book that probably makes it one of the best money for value map applications available. Memory maps is very reliable. I had very few issues over the past seven or eight years with that application and I'm still using it on nearly every trip to do my track logging because I find it works very well even if in the background it will not stop recording. Being able to purchase all HEMA for wheel drive maps without a subscription is a great plus. I find the desktop application great. I have that on my MacBook. I also downloaded all the maps there. So when traveling I can actually do route planning and so on via the laptop which has a much bigger screen and makes planning a bit easier. But like most applications not everything is perfect and there are certainly quite a few things I would like to see improved. For instance memory maps is nine years old and while it is constantly updated in regards to um, iOS updates so it is always compatible but it really hasn't seen any major improvements for quite some time. Here and there there is a new feature added however I think the whole user experience really needs an overhaul and brought up into the century. As I mentioned before I really like memory maps for track logging however it is really let down in the management of the track logs, waypoints and routes. You can't search, you can't create folders, you can't sort your um, track logs so that is really something which definitely needs improving in my opinion. While the search works very well it doesn't have a POI database like uh, Explorer OS or HEMA Explorer. So you don't have detailed information about points of interest. However you can obviously use Wikicams and other applications to compensate for that. Memory maps only works with raster maps. I'm not sure whether that is necessarily a negative thing. In particular in regards to the HEMA maps I very much prefer the old HEMA raster maps over their new vector maps. 
I think the contrast and so on is bad on the new maps. The usability is just not there. But check out my dedicated uh, review about the new HEMA 4x4 Explorer app where I go into detail why I don't like that. So while you can only have raster maps, I don't think that is necessarily um, negative. So thanks again for watching guys. If you enjoy my videos, if they are of any value to you, please like, share, subscribe. And if you can, please consider become one of my Patreon supporters. And with the equivalent of a cup of coffee or two, you can really help me to make these videos. You will also gain early access to all of my videos and you can ask me direct questions via the Patreon platform. Have a good day and I hope to see you along the tracks.